I'd love to start with research. We've had a great time going through research. Uh, so this is just a quick overview of research. I'm happy to share the link to this. Um, some of the paintings from one of my favorite painters, Daniel Miriam, does these sort of fantastical paintings. A lot of 1900 Sweden here, some MUCA posters, just a kind of a smattering of uh, different pieces of research uh, that really kind of help guide us when it comes to specifically the color palette, architectural elements, and the like. All right, I thought it'd be good to take you through a bit of a computer 3D model fly-through of the set um, and kind of give you a sense of that. And from there, I'll uh, introduce to you uh, each scenic element piece by piece. So this is a, a back of the house view uh, of the set. Uh, kind of swing you around here to house left uh, and the view from there. Um, swing you all the way around here to house right. Um, give you a sense of what it feels like from house right and uh, visibility to the bridge, which has been something we've been keeping on top of. And then um, this is a view of the front row just behind the orchestra pit, um, so just behind where Angela will be. Um, so that's a view from there. Um, but segueing here to uh, what I call a 3D plan, um, nobody really sets up here, um, but it's a way to kind of give you a breakdown piece by piece of the set, kind of working upstage to downstage. Um, so with that in mind, starting upstage, there will be a, a big curved psych upstage. It'll be lit beautifully, no doubt, um, by Pablo. Um, and then working downstage of that, we have this beautiful scrim, uh, painted scrim that the scenic artists here at the Denver Center have just completed. I was able to see that when I was in town a week or so ago. Uh, it's just just gorgeous. Um, then moving downstage of that, there's three curtains. The two on the sides, these two here, track on and off, so they slide to the left and to the right. Uh, and then there's a center tab. This curtain here will fly up and down. I don't think all the way out, but it'll fly up to about 10 feet, which is the uh, height of the inner above, or the bridge we're calling it. Downstage of that is this gorgeous uh, arched portal um, that kind of frames, I think, uh, everything upstage of that. Uh, and then this finally uh, very complex engineering feat here for the Denver Center, um, but they're good at that, trust me, um, is this um, bridge. Obviously, you can see access um, stage right and stage left. Uh, its height of that deck is about 10 feet uh, in the air. Uh, and so it's beautifully, it's been beautifully crafted um, by the shops here at the Denver Center. I uh, can't forget that there is also a floor. Uh, this uh, floor has a 28-foot diameter um, revolve, donut revolve we call it. Uh, so it has about a 14-foot aperture in the middle. Um, and so that gives us about seven feet uh, to rotate elements, if you think of it this way, from a 12 o'clock position. Those that remember clocks <laughs> that aren't digital, uh, 12 o'clock position down to a six o'clock position. Um, and so that's uh, the main feature of the floor is using that as a machine essentially to get us to get elements um, from upstage to downstage. Um, so that's an overview of the 3D model. Okay, quickly we're going to go through, uh, not scene by scene, but look by look, you might say. Um, so we're just going to kind of skim through uh, the overture, top of show, features the scrim uh, in, in all its beauty. Um, uh, for the waltz, we love to kind of, um, um, inner above will employ uh, as needed, the bridge will employ there. Um, stage of local theater will look something like this with that center red curtain tab up. Um, Eggerman rooms, for the most part, there's different versions of this, but this is the Eggerman room look. We'll use the donut revolve to revolve these elements into place. And then there down right is a popper, a little small elevator that will rise as kind of a sitable, in this case for Henrik. Um, Desiree's digs looks something like this with essentially three elements, a dresser, love seat, and writing desk. Again, using the revolve to get them to those locations. Um, the breakfast room uh, in Malcolm Country House looks something like this. Um, and then, you know, arm felt terrace will use the, will begin to sort of, as we go through the show, feature the sky uh, and feature lighting and that type of thing and really open things up uh, as we work through Act Two. The dining table has been a, a source of a lot of conversation. Uh, getting that from basically 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock would look something like this. We fly in a chandelier and uh, complete that look. Uh, and then we might add some, you know, kind of textural elements as we go along. This is Desiree's bedroom, uh, and I had basic idea for that during Act Two. Um, but uh, I'm sure Pablo will really kind of make these look much better um, when it comes to kind of giving us a sense of the outdoors through Act, uh, the rest of Act Two. 